What's going on, buddy? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another React video. Now, today, in the last video, I said I would react to some more Poppy Playtime to get a summary and basic understanding of the whole story that is currently ongoing because Chapter 3 just got announced quite recently. I saw on the internet. So, I figured I'd come back and watch more Poppy Playtime. So, today, we're going to react to the story of Chapter 1. Then, I'll do a reaction to Chapter 2. Um, so, today, I have this from Game Salt. Salt. How he pronounces names. Painting the story and ending and how they're explained and all the VH, 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 VHS tapes. I can't say that really quickly. Quickly. Of chapter one. So, said do this because I really want to load notice story now. Three, two, one. Ex employee receives a pack oh. an ex employee receives a package including a mysterious note and a VHS tape instructing him to visit the old factory as most of the vanished employees are still there as his curiosity gets the better of him and he visits the factory he unveils sinister secrets that have been long abandoned alongside the factory hi folks i'm R your narrator you can follow me on Twitter, where you can generally catch up and send me game suggestions. This video will contain spoilers. With that in mind, let's begin. Not really one to care about spoilers. I, I said this to someone in the comment section a while back when I just started to react to more soccer videos, which is going to happen. It's just going to take a while for me to get them out there. As uh, recording a few videos a day, setting them up on a schedule, and August is almost completely booked. So I will get to more stalker videos in the future. So keep that in mind. For those who are asking. As an ex-employee of Playtime Co., the protagonist finally returns to the factory many years after everyone within disappeared. After receiving a package, including a note instructing him to find the flower and that the employees are still there. Enclosed also within the package is a standard Puppy Doll commercial VHS tape, which contains some eerie clips glitching in. You are about to see the most incredible doll ever invented. Her name is Poppy, and she is the first truly intelligent doll in the world. A little girl can talk to her. Poppy gives her answers. She is the first doll actually able to have a conversation with a child. Hard to believe? Just watch. Poppy Playtime! Poppy's as like lovable as a real girl, and she talks like, like one too. Hi, my name is Poppy. I love you. Can you help me polish my shoes? Why, of course, Poppy. Just like a real girl, Poppy always wants to look her best. Perfect! Thank you! Her hair is sturdy and won't come out when you brush it. And smells just like a poppy flower. It now, in the last video I reacted to, she wasn't- she was mentioned, but wasn't told to be a hostile toy. So I'm assuming she helps Claire out in the game, from what I understand in the last video. Is there anything else? I know she wasn't really touched upon, but from what I was able to saw, she seems like she wants to help the player. Like to say, Poppy? I'm a real girl. Just like you. What's the time? Playtime! And if you've ever wanted to see how all of the nation's favorite toys were created, Playtime Co. is now offering factory tours at just $2.99 a person. An and entire that wasn't hour bad in the most then. magical toy factory on earth. What are you waiting for? Come visit the factory. We can Oh. Find the flower. That where all the experiments escaped. All the experimental toys. Human ones. <laughs> the commercial introduces a new doll called Puppy, which is called to be the most realistic doll who talks and interacts. The doll says the unsettling line that she's just like real people, displaying the obsession of Playtime Company in creating lifelike dolls. The commercial then ends with a location with a puppy flower drawing leading to a door. As the protagonist enters the long abandoned factory, 
he picks up a green-colored VHS tape, which acts as an introductory tape. Hi, my name is Leif Bier, and I'm the head of innovation here at the Playtime Co. Toy Factory. If you're seeing this, then you're trespassing. Yeah, we play this little tape on loop whenever we close the factory for the day. So, trespasser, just to make you aware, while we pride ourselves primarily on our high-quality toys and excellent child care, we also pride ourselves on our security. For example, this facility is full of hidden motion triggers, which, once set off, will turn on the factory's emergency alarms and directly contact the authorities. And that's one of the more tame aspects of our security system. Uh -oh. No spoilers. So, you've got my warning. It's not too late to turn around. I just hope that you're certain whatever you're doing is worth it. The tape contains the voice of Leith Pierre, who is the head of innovation at the Playtime company. The tape unveils that it acts as a warning to trespassers, mentioning that the factory is full of hidden motion detection tools, which wow. will automatically contact the authorities. That is a lot of like, highly advanced security systems in the 1980s. Or when this um, factory was created, the storyline of Poppy Playtime. I'm pretty sure they said it was in the 1980s. Please correct me in the comment section if I am wrong. Because once again, I am new to all this Poppy Playtime stuff. So if I'm wrong, correct me. I give you my authority. After being triggered, but as the factory has been abandoned for long, this doesn't seem to be the case. But something more alarming is when Leith mentions that the motion triggers are one of the many aspects of their security, which means there are more menacing tools for securing the facility from unwanted trespassers. The protagonist soon stumbles upon the second tape, colored blue. The tape includes the instructions for Grab Pack, a creative machinery which improves the workflow within the factory. That's what you're wearing throughout the entire game. After wearing the grab pack and utilizing it, the protagonist manages to open the gate leading to the main hall, where he witnesses in awe an enormous blue doll called Huggy Wuggy, who wears a menacing large grin. A description of yeah. the toy written in 1984 goes on to explain how this has become the company's best-selling toy, as Elliot Ludwig, the founder, had a vision to create lifelike toys, which Huggy proved to be a success, as he could hug people forever with his long, unnatural arms. As the protagonist collects a key and travels to a room to power the generator, he comes across a poster of the rules. The rules seem to be a bit quirky, especially the don'ts, as they Should forbid anyone staying past 8pm in the factory. Innovation. They have rules against you entering innovation room without authorization and tampering with machinery as well. As if these things have happened before, with the company possibly hiding a secret Pretty and conducting mysterious nice, plans after 8pm. Further in the room, there's a lot of blood stains and splatter on the walls, indicating something sinister and gruesome had happened, which the company has been trying to keep a secret. As the protagonist starts the generator oh, and walks back to the left. main hall, in his shock, he witnesses that the Huggy doll has vanished. He then finds another tape colored yellow of a security camera. Rich, where are they keeping the Huggy boxes? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Remember when maintenance last did a sweep of this place? <laughs> no. Exactly. Nobody in this stupid company knows what they're doing. Oh, I swear, I haven't seen a single box in its place since they started flooding the storehouse with orphanage junk. Right. I get it. It's a nice program, a lot brand. It's just hard to be happy about it when manufacturing's on our necks about it, because we can't fight stupid hockey boxes! Rich. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's... it's for the orphans. Rich Avery, mm. the storeroom manager, is heard complaining about the sheer number of boxes scattered around for orphans, a presumable program set up to provide orphans with friends, hence giving them the Huggy Dolls. Although being a selfless and kind plan, 
It's poorly organized, causing the employees to suffer working in a stressful mm. and unorganized factory. Unethical. The poster later on explains the plan which encouraged the employees of the organization to participate and foster or adopt orphan kids. After managing to find a second hand for the grab pack, the protagonist is able to traverse further into the factory. Reaching the make a friend room where toys are put together, the protagonist comes across another tape colored pink, which is of an interview of Stella Graber, a potential employee. So, Stella, what made you want to work at the Playtime Co. Factory? Playing with toys when I was young was so magical. I could go straight from my bedroom floor to anywhere in the world. It was such a great feeling. And being able to work at a toy factory, somewhere that can provide kids with that same experience, that's a pretty great feeling too. Sometimes though, I really, really wish I could go back. To being a kid, I mean. And it's weird, because adults are just kids, but older. I don't think anyone ever really feels like an adult. But your body that is true. older and older, and then you die. Poof. <laughs> Human bodies just can't stay young forever. No, no, There's we cannot. things, though. Like some trees that can stay alive even while being way older than the person. I mean... The oldest people to ever live are still younger than those. So I guess everyone is always young relative to something. Right? Stella shows her enthusiasm about toys and how she loves playing with them. But due to growing up, it's something she can't do easily anymore. And she explains how people become more fragile as they get older. She continues that some creatures such as trees are very old, but despite that, they still seem young and are actually young in their own life cycle comparatively. This prepares the protagonist for an extremely unsettling fact that is about to unveil. As the protagonist opens another gate, he witnesses in shock the overshadowing Hagiwagi toy walking on its own, following after him. Unsure to what to do, he gets into the conveyor belt ducts and runs with all his might. The Huggy doll does the same and chases after him. Okay. Uh, so chapter one isn't long. After a tense chase sequence, the protagonist collapses a bridge, making Huggy fall to its demise. Shaken and breathless, the protagonist recollects himself and thinks to himself to what the hell he just experienced. He soon stumbles upon a black tape which contains unsettling information about what this organization had been carrying out in secret. Final log in relation experiment 1006, the prototype. Coordination like for people are screaming in the background within his skill set, as well as the skill set of all other experiments of his type. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process, which should have under no circumstances been left unaccounted for. That's why I'm making this log, so that the same mistake won't be made twice. Any future experiments will need to be contained and disposed of in a secure location. I'm not worried about myself. One breakthrough and I'll be back. We must forge onwards in the name of science. Whether those who are beneath us understand it or not, People who mess with science end up getting the end of the stick. Death. Truly, I mean, really. End of the concerned scientist on the VHS mentions how one of the experiment subjects went missing and was not contained and destroyed, just like the previous experiments. This experiment is labeled 1006, which could mean that they conducted more than 1000 experiments. The man on the tape further explains that this is for the sake of science, and whether the people shouting and screaming beneath understand it or not, the experiments must continue. The people beneath might be the employees, possibly even the orphans they so blatantly uttered to care about, whom they detained and experimented on. They seem to be breaking the gate and trying to resurface when the audio log ends. The scientist promises he will be back, 
seemingly if he will be reincarnated in some other shape or form. The protagonist then reaches the puppy flower drawing leading to a door which he observed in the commercial tape which was sent to him. Yeah. The door leads to a staircase going down to a hallway with house-like wallpaper. The end of the corridor leads to a playroom with a puppy doll in a glass casing. As he opens the door of the casing, the lights flicker and turn off, with the doll speaking with a familiar voice, mentioning that she's surprised that her case has been opened, as if she has been stuck there for a very long time. You opened my case. The voice of the doll is extremely similar to Stella Graber from the pink VHS tape. She has the same accent and tone of voice, indicating she achieved what she wished for in a sinister turn of events. Yeah. She became ageless, just as she explained in Childish Joy in her interview. It seems that she was experimented on and her soul was transferred into a puppy doll, making her immortal. This, however, took her free will and transformed her into a doll, as if she sold her soul to the devil for eternal life, with her wish fulfilled, but with certain sinister caveats. It seems as if all the employees of the organization were experimented on in efforts for their souls to be transferred into the dolls, to fulfill the obsessive vision of Elliot Ludwig, the founder of the company to make lifelike dolls. We are left only with speculations at this moment, with future episodes unveiling more information. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch more by clicking on the cards on the screen. You can also stay tuned for the latest videos by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host R, and as always, have a fantastic day. Okay, that was a very informative. Now I have another standing of the point line that Bobby Playtime is trying to give. So it wasn't just a place for orphans to be adopted and play with toys, but it was just a cover-up so that they scientists could make a way to make people immortal, but apparently it didn't go well because everything did. <laughs> but with that being said, guys, and now I'm going to look more into Poppy Playtime into the future. We react to chapter two somewhere down the line. And um, we'll just take it from there. Same thing with uh, Stalker. We'll take it from there. Uh, so with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoy today's reaction video to I'm Story and and Chapter One. See you. Bye.